she's taking up one bed and one bathroom. Cool. So, um, No, the guided tours on the weekends go through our educational facility. So we go through like that two-story building and our lecture hall and a bunch of the student housing, which are like older, funkier airships from when we first started here. Right. This particular building was built in 2019, so it's like relatively new. Um, and you can just see like how much more spacious and yeah. you know, comfortable it is. So like I said, that previous model, that's the encounter model, so like kind of basic, you know, basic model. And then this is a global. Um, and this is kind of like what people were requesting. They wanted basically the airship equivalent to what they're used to, you know? Yeah, so these are just operable skylights. You see there's a little sailing feet up there. Is that more for temperature control or Yeah, more for and for ventilation, you know, whatever you want. But like I said, most we just try to keep all the systems really passive yeah. so that there's less things to break and less right. maintenance. Yeah. So this is just the gravity um, supported uh, skylight box. It's got like a counterweight on the back. And then obviously much bigger greenhouse. So for somebody who likes to garden, we have like full grown banana trees that you know produce a bunch of bananas every year and you get like 30 bananas at once. Um, rosemary, which just goes crazy uh -huh. in our ships. Um, fig trees are also really popular because um, we'll get like two flushes of fresh figs each year. Oh, I can smell the rosemary and I can't smell anything yeah. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, I don't know what this is, but we're always um, kind of, you know, like the banana trees get too big and sometimes you have to take them out and then other things move in their place so it really is an ecosystem that requires cool. some involvement yeah. and for people who don't have a green thumb or don't want to have like a gardener um maybe you just do things like um the variegated geranium which is like citronella um the spiderwort just things that are beautiful and very low maintenance like more of the ornamentals like the philodendron this is a ficus, you know, stuff that can just grow and thrive and maybe the only maintenance it really requires is like some pruning every now and again. Huh. So these buildings, this one has a lot of ingress and egress. Uh, it's got all the entrances on the soft base, which is nice, especially if you had plans for your outer space, you know. Yeah. And then with the eastern and western entrances to these airlocks, like um, we have another model that has a garage on right. the side. So this would be garage out here, and then you come through this little mudroom um, into the main it's space. Gonna and all of them face this direct space, this direction. 15 degrees east to south is the optimum solar gain for this okay. geographic area. location. Yeah. But if you were like in Australia or something, or you know anywhere in the southern hemisphere, we have to look at. Yeah, if this your this is your tour, so make yourselves at home. So this is like the master. Yeah, master. this is the master suite. This particular building has a lot more storage. I think my kind of, you know, sometimes he's just building buildings like to, to showcase what an airship can look like, you know, yeah. that it doesn't have to be, you know, weird or... So every building has a slightly different concept, different personality, different finishes. Um, and this one, he's like, all right, they want closets, we're going to give them closets. This is serious. Is his son in Yeah, his son was, uh, was raised with this whole company um, and started his own company in California. Oh, awesome. Okay, so we've oh, really? we got something that's... Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I well, I mean, his... he was fired from this company three times. So. Oh. <laughs> I think he finally realized, like, he's not going to fight with his dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well... <laughs> But yeah, I love the bathrooms and all the details in here. It's private TV, bike stuff. Everything's pretty much handmade. Yeah. Like this, this um, shower here, that's all, you know, people come from all around the world. They want to learn techniques, plaster, tiling, like people with zero skill whatsoever. And so it's kind of a niche construction company, but it's also offering design build, but it's also... How long does the school take? It's a month. It's just a month long intensive, 40 hours a week. Um, half the day is labs and lectures, and then the other half of the day is working on the buildings. 
and you work on different airships of different stages, so you get to see, see how, it works. Yeah, how all, the, all the steps, just maybe not in order. Okay. And then the exits live in old airships, so there could be that immersion experience as well. And uh, there's lots of, I mean, over Mike's been building here for over 45 years, and he yeah. has like eight homes of his own, mul yeah. multiple airship compounds. Uh, previous like airship offices that are have been decommissioned and are now functioning as other things. We have like a three-story uh, castle. This is actually the this picture is the the bridge to Mike's house. Um, it's all made out of cans. <laughs> <laughs> Does he live close? No, he lives in town on he five does. acres. Yep, and he has like six airships on his property, and he rents some of them out. And those were airships like he built, you know, in the seventies when he right. first showed up. Yeah. And then he built himself a new home, like, in the early 2000s, like, next Good door. Good for him. So, you know, yeah. maybe he used his architectural degree to, <laughs> yeah. He is actually still a, a licensed architect in the state of Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, New York, Puerto Rico, and Ontario, Canada. And I might be forgetting one. Um, but he did have to resign his license in New Mexico for breaking several, uh, like, rules <laughs> and codes and laws and... Interesting. So yeah. he has to have somebody else build a farm now and update. Yeah, if he's building in New Mexico, he has other architects who will stamp his drawings and assume the liability for them. Okay. But yeah, airships are just considered regular homes in New Mexico. Like, they're mortgageable, insurable. They don't really see them as being any different than a conventional house or, like, as far as the right. financing and everything goes. Um, in fact, airships are kind of considered, like, prime real estate in Taos, which is why they are gaining value all the time. But in the 80s, Mike actually was working with the contract off of the Fair Market Housing Association to build subsidized solar homes, right, that most of his crew were eligible for those loans, low-interest loans, because they were all poor. Yeah. Um, and so then they hired their, the company that they work for to build their house. And most of those homes are located in the, like, um, Vertilaga area, Uh there was that was cheap land back then, so there's like 40 airships over there, but they're not even a community. They're just lots that people built airships on next door to each other. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. So this is you know. These, I like I like that the thing is behind the uh, yeah the, the headboard is it. the closet kind of built in. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean you could you don't have to do that. Like you could have your own furniture all you want, and then again like I just love the bathrooms in here. I just really like tubs and you know all the material choices everything feels a little light and natural and then there's like doors out to the greenhouse so if you were you know in the living room and you just want to use the guest bathroom without going into the bedroom right. you can just enter through here so that's one of the unique floor plan uh, to the global model is like all of the room entrances are mostly off of the greenhouse that one door that you tried back that there, one. which was locked, yeah. is the laundry room. And oh, so okay. um, you could act like come off the kitchen to the laundry room over to the, to the bedroom. Well, this part but is... The rentals team just has a lot because they have all their cleaning supplies in there. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty neat. Really neat. But, you know, it's it's got all the modern convenience of a home. Like, when you're here, you don't even think about it as being any different. You certainly don't think about it as having been constructed out of tigers and, right. and cans and things. Yeah. Um, but it's very comfortable. Do you do a lot of plastic bottles now or no? Just... Not on these houses. We do plastic bottles mostly in, like, more tropical environments and stuff like that. But uh, most homeowners don't want plastic bottles. Well, I was, I was just thinking of things that are thrown out, like, Oh, speaking of my plastic bottles, what do I do with it in the car? Probably. Yeah, I mean, like that. Like I said, this community, we take plastic, and our students, you know, um, we make these eco bricks where we take single-use plastic and ram it into the bottle, and it creates like a rigid, you know, yeah, and then you can put it in the subfloor, just lay it in the slab, it eats up the, you know, the amount of space that you would use just filling with concrete, and also provides and our value as far as insulation goes, but not everywhere you can do that, you know, so. Huh. Yeah. And so this is like kind of one of the bigger ones, and then through that door, that would be like the granny flat, but yeah. we'll just leave her alone. You leave her alone, that's not nice. I think she just got a puppy too, I don't know. But oh, we all have dogs here, so. That's not <laughs> right. I love dogs, I just, they just don't want